Welcome to the Pleasant People podcast. Thank you so much for having me in your beautiful home. You're very welcome. Thank you. Um, so, I just need to do a little introduction into myself first. My name is Molly Koth. I am a freelance interior designer with my own business, Moco Interior. But aside from that, I run the Pleasant People podcast where we get to know the people behind the brand and talk to all sorts of creatives and business owners and interior designers and things. Hence, I'm here today with Jane from Rocket St. George. Hello, Jane. Hi there. <laughs> Again, thank you so much for having me in your lovely house and inviting me here. It is beautiful and I'm so excited to be here. Oh, you're, you're very kind. <laughs> it looks lovely. Um, so, before I get you to introduce yourself, we're going to start off with the standard quick fire questions. Actually, wait, I tell a lie. Before I do that, I've got to do our jingle. The oh, yes. jingle. I'm ready. <laughs> so, as I said, the last I have given Jane a bit of a pre warning about the jingle because, you know, I keep bringing it on people and they're like <laughs> panicking because they're like, are you going to get me to sing along? And I'm like, don't panic. Please don't let um, me sing. <laughs> <laughs> so, as I say, the last word is day, and I'll give you a little point, and I need you to go, hey, for me, okay? I can do that. Ready? <clears throat> Come and join us on the Pleasant People podcast, listen now, and we will brighten up your day. Hey! Yay! <laughs> <laughs> that's over. See, that's, yeah, got that out of the way. Thank you so much for joining in. One of these days I'm going to get to someone to do it, and they're going to look at me like... I'm not doing that. And I'm like, I've just been abandoned, I've been left out in the cold on my own. I have to just stay on my own. Um, so, yeah, I thought I would actually, before we get into our quick fire questions, if you could just like introduce yourself a little bit and yes, tell us about course. yourself and Rocket St George and all that. I'm Jane Rocket from Rocket St George. Is Rocket um, actually your last name? Yes. Oh, I never knew that. That's so cool. Cool. No, no, no. My business partner, Lucy, is Lucy St George. So, there you go. That I explains never knew everything. That. <laughs> So many people don't know that, and they, and they, they is that your real name? Like, yes, yes. I just went my into name your... was my name before the business. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't just change it for the business. I just went into your bathroom actually, and there was like it's someone. It must have been your daughter or someone had a trophy. Yes, and it said something St. George, Lucy St. George. Or... No, it says Lola Rocket. Lola Rocket. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And my I was daughter. Like, I was so confused. I was like, oh, that's actually your last name. What a cool last name. My mum actually bought that for her because she got a certificate. She said, a certificate? She needs a cup. So Aww. she went out and bought a cup. Lola Rocket, that is the best name yes, I've ever Yes, she's heard. Lola Ray Rocket. I was hoping she might be a country and western singer or something cool. <laughs> or I think she could actually sound like a superhero. Yeah, yeah. I've Lola got a, a few with good I've got um, Tyler Fox Rocket. Oh my god, they're brilliant. They are such good names. And I've got an Eden Honey, but she's changed her name to Ren, which I like oh, even more, oh, so... Win-win. My mum was going to call me Anastasia when I was born. Oh, I wouldn't mind that. I love Anastasia. I would have been Anya, for sure. And then my dad came in and was like, oh no, we need to give her something boring like Molly, and you can name the next oh, I one. I love Molly. Molly's a Do lovely you? name. It's boring. Anastasia's but... a bit more glamorous. Yeah. yeah it's a bit like, <laughs> wow. It <laughs> could be pretentious to be fair, but... Some kind of superhero. Outfit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And exactly. The um, yeah. Then she, he said to her, "You can name the next one." And then she never had another kid. So oh. yeah. But anyway, I would have liked to be an annual. Yeah, Lola, it's Lola always Rocket. it's always difficult having someone else's opinion. Yeah. yeah. But anyway, you've got great kids' names, so it's yeah, always they're okay. They're okay. Um, so sorry. Yeah. Tell us a bit about. Obviously, oh, now yeah. we know Rockets the meaning of the brand, <laughs> the name behind the brand. Lucy and I set up Rockets and George in two thousand and seven. Right. Um, we did it because we were both car booters and, um, and we went to antique fairs and second-hand shops all the time because we weren't very well off at all and mm. we loved doing our homes up and we used to find these treasures all the time mm. and people, would, all our friends would say, oh, will you find me things? You know, oh, will you mm. get me things from my house? And we thought, hold on a minute. There could be a business yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> And we, the best way to train to be a buyer is to go to car boot sales. Yeah. Because you have to find the gem amongst all the other That's items. That's so true, yeah. Um, so it was a really good training ground. And yeah. we didn't really know what we were doing. My history was in marketing. I used to work in PR. Right. And I was a photographer, so I trained photographer. Great. So I had those skills. Lucy had worked in retail. She was a florist and worked in retail oh, cool. shops. And um, 
the, doing big events, etc., etc. Mm. So she had that creative styling side of things. Yeah. And we just bought a website for dummies and read it. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> and <laughs> got a lot of people, asked a lot of advice, and sort of asked everyone we who was in the public eye then who had websites you know can we ask you questions mm. um that's something i'd recommend to anybody starting a business yeah. just be really ballsy ring them up raise them email yeah. yeah just ask for help ask mm. for advice ask if your idea is good yeah i don't i've never approached i've done it a bit when growing my own business but i've never approached someone and gone could you help me with this and they've gone no don't talk to me people are generally so yeah, willing yeah. to like share well, their we're knowledge all, we're quite honored to be asked yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. i feel privileged like you yeah. want my advice well <laughs> you know but um that really really helped us loads and loads and we just i mean we grew quite slowly we mm. we hit the um dot com we thought we were late but actually i think we were, we were bang really, on time yeah bang on time yeah um because we my pr experience was really helpful because back then in 2007 magazines were king Mm, Dates totally. or Queen, sorry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and if you got something in a magazine, you sold it. That's yeah. how you, you know, I, I remember every month you'd wait for your magazines, you know, your interior magazines. Sadly, that's not the case now because we, we have huge amounts of um, inspiration from the internet and yeah. the Instagram and all these print press. There's so many yeah. wonderful ways to get inspired. Yeah. But back then it was much harder. See, in some ways, yeah, I think that's kind of, I think in some ways we've almost lost something in that though, in the fact that like, I so agree with you, like when I was really young, my mum used to get those magazines and they'd come in and it would be like, you hadn't seen any interior, you hadn't mm. seen many products, you hadn't seen many clothes, there wasn't so much of the internet really then, no. and when you got a magazine in it was like, oh, really exciting, whereas now it is almost a bit like oversaturated, if you get a magazine you sort of flick through it like, meh, and then as you I say, know. you can go on Instagram or Pinterest or online and there's, as you know. I used to pore over those magazines yeah. when I was younger. Every single page. And it was so it's curated like, yes, and like, I've never seen that before, whereas now we've all seen a lot of stuff, you know? Yeah, we are oversaturated. Yeah. And actually, yeah. to find original ideas is harder than it ever was. Impossible. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think travel's the only way. Well, that actual tone, we're getting into it. So, okay, no, yes. sorry. no, 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 no. it's brilliant. It, I have no, I have so much to say and I have so much to unpack, but I, I have a ridiculous format which I want to okay, stick to well, and I don't know why. Sure, but go. so we're going to pinpoint. We're going to put a pin there in the okay. travel, and we're going to come back to that. I just want to ask you my quick fire questions, because, again, the whole point of this podcast is, like, I want to talk all things interiors. I'm so excited to be talking to you, Bella. But um, I just want to get to know you a bit as well, okay. opposed to being like, you know, I am Jane Brockett, here is my company, blah, blah, blah. I just want to know you, you as a human being as okay. well. That's so, nice. favourite film? These questions are so hard. I know I they're not. Say to anyone that's listening, they are so hard. But I'm going to answer the truth, yes. which is Frida. Oh, brilliant! Because it's just got everything that I love. It's got overcoming adversities. It's got female lead. It's got passion. It's got crea creativity. It's got a love story. It's a brilliant, and it's in Mexico, which I adore. Oh my god! And all the colours, and it's just wonderful. Just a spectacle. Yeah, it's political drama as well. It's got everything. Everything you could possibly yeah. want in one small yeah. film. Brilliant. Yeah. Best dance ever. Um, favorite desert island product. Oh yeah, yeah suntan cream, obviously. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe no one's Not ever that anyone has seen me age. No, but I, I can't believe no one's ever thought of that. You're on a desert island, and you don't have anything. Yeah, you're going to need some cream. It's really good quality suntan cream. Yeah, we're going to burn. It's a really good shop. Um, favorite color. Uh, it's called A Another. Okay. I uh, don't know if you've heard of it. I it's quite a rare one, but it, it smells divine. Yeah. Where can you get it? Um, um, Nielsen Boutique sell oh, it. Oh, wow, lovely. They sell it. It's, uh, I'm not even sure where it's from. No. But it, it's just, when I wear it, everyone says, oh, you smell lovely. Yeah. And I think that's a sign. I think it's nice as well when you, you get one that's kind of slightly different. I love mm. it when I ask someone that question and I think I've never heard of that before. It's like something you and Mary oh, will like I'll give you a little smell before you go. Smell, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Favourite candle? <laughs> Oh, now I change these all yeah, the time. Yeah, I know. So, they are really hard questions, um, they're not wrong. I just, I've just come back from New York and I bought one over there and I'm really enjoying it, but it's a brand I've never heard of and I can't remember the name of it. Okay. Which is really rubbish. I'm no, saying. no, it's absolutely um, not. But I have to say, we've, we're launching a new range very shortly for Christmas and they smell 
divine. Right. So they'll be my favourite name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. And they say really funny things on them. So, oh, do they? Yes, oh, probably too rude for this. Scandal. Put pictures in you know, with the swear word and curse words. Well, they're, they're really endearing words, but there's yeah. a little bit of naughtiness. Playful. Involved. Yeah, but that's what we're yeah. talking about. Rockets and George. That's what we're here for. Um, okay, so this is the big, the big scary question. Do you, I'm, I suppose you're going to go with? Do you have a Rocket St George mantra, ethos, epitaph? We do. We've got a purpose. Yeah. Um, we believe that everybody's individual and we want to enable people to express themselves creativity, creatively um, within their homes. So we are sort of, we want people to learn how to make their home right for them. Mm. I think we, it's very tricky because there are so many interior trends and we all feel like we need to follow them. Mm -hmm. and we, but we're not about that. We're about being individual, being unique to you. What do you love? And I think um, we wrote a book about this, yeah. Lucy and I. The first book was all about working out who you are, what you feel happy in. Because it, your home's like an outfit. If, if you're wearing the wrong outfit, you feel awkward. Yeah, you feel wrong. Yeah, yeah and if yeah. you're wearing something that is you through and through, you, feel, you, you feel comfortable and your home's the same. Yeah. So that's a very long version of no. what is. I've actually got one <laughs> sentence. <laughs> Rocket St George is all about. That's what we try to. Uh, I think it's totally customer. brilliant. Yeah, I, I think people naturally do tend to follow trends, and even in my sort of work and through interior design and stuff, I tell people just to not really bother. Like I know they come in and. Well, I'm a sucker for it. I'm, yeah. I can't help it. Yeah. But I don't pick all of them. I that's only it. pick the ones I love. Well, that's it. I mean, certain trends come in even, as you say, in fashion and stuff. Like, recently, there's, like, the high-neck puffy sleeve trend in fashion that's coming yeah. in. And I think, I love that, but I always have. So I'll grab onto that trend whilst it's here. But just say, you know, a, a colour comes in and you might... Say you might have a massive aversion to yellow, but yellow's really trendy, so you paint your bedroom yellow. And you think, well, I don't like it, but it's meant to be on trend. What are you doing? I did it. I wallpapered my, in an old house of mine. I did the Palms wallpaper. And I love that wallpaper. Mm. I love, I love it, but it's not me. And you just knew. So I yeah. liked seeing it, and I love, I've admired it. Yeah. And I put it in my bedroom, and I went home. And I can't. Well, it's there's not a me. difference it's as not well me. between going. You know, I can, as I say, in fashion or in interiors, going. That looks brilliant on that person. But yeah. you've got to know. Can you actually? Yes, yeah, absolutely. It on yourself? Can you see it yourself? I love that. Yeah, there's no point. It's, in and that's a tricky thing. If you're not doing it all day, every day, like we do. Yeah. That's no, really we, hard to identify what is you and what is you just love it because it looks gorgeous but it actually won't work for you. Well I love the whole Rockets and George thing of you guys do push the boundaries a bit, you are a bit more sort of playful, you know, and as you said at the beginning, everyone is individual, everyone's unique, so trying to have this kind of, I mean there's a lot, I'm going to be mean, but there's a lot of grey, boring interiors out there and, you know, people are colourful and diverse and, you know, eccentric in their own little ways, yeah. so your home should be a reflection of that. I think so, and I think a bit of humour. Yeah, never hurt anyone. It. It's not serious, it doesn't have to be mm -mm -mm. a serious, and it can change, it doesn't have to stay, the a home starts and then it evolves over mm. time, you collect things from when you go away, or Absolutely. a nice picture you see and mm. you add that, and then it becomes a curation of the people that live in the home. I'm so delighted I've got you on here because when it comes to, you know, you said obviously it's all, it doesn't have to be so serious and things. I think, I, again, I saw another reason to sort of start this podcast is I have found there's a level of most industries, particularly fashion, but a little bit interiors, of a bit of like intimidation, a bit of elitism, a bit of sort of fear in the fact that people often feel it's so professional and a bit stuffy. And I remember I was an interior designer when I was 18 and a lot of people were scared genuinely of me coming to their house because I think they thought I was like a devil wears Prada, like oh the interior designer's coming. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, I can understand that. Do you know though, what I mean? Because... Like we've got this sort of reputation. Yeah, because a lot of people aren't creative. Mm. They know what they like. Everybody knows what they like and they don't like. Yeah. But they don't. It, they need guidance. Like guidance. Yeah. yeah. And there's and, nothing wrong with that. Yeah. And for you to say, you know, it doesn't all have to be so serious. It's absolutely. I'm trying to kind of. And also, it doesn't have to be forever. No. It's not a permanent decision that you have to stick with this color paint or this forever and ever and ever. If you you can change it in a couple of years. If people get terrified. Like, what if I paint the wall the wrong color? Repaint it, darling. You know, oh, I painted the walls the wrong color. Uh, yeah, times. me too. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Don't worry about it. We've all done it. <laughs> um, what was my next picture? one. Best restaurant you've ever eaten at. Uh, this is one. It's it's. No one will have heard of it. That's fine. Um, but it's one on the beach in Portugal. 
and oh. it's called Pintadinos oh. and it's got plastic chairs and they've got a lovely old man who barbecues and they do the best fish salad and chips oh, I've ever eaten. That sounds delightful. Yeah, it we is. go to one in, is it Portugal or in Spain? I can't remember now. But anyway, I've been there loads since I was a kid called Caniso and it sounds like a very similar thing. It's just on the beach, yeah. fresh fish. The fish is straight really, out of the sea. Yeah, yeah, really relaxed. What's not, not tonight? Yeah, not you can sit in your bikini. Yeah, yeah, it's just attached. Yeah. <laughs> Apart from when your legs stick to the plastic <laughs> chairs. Because <laughs> it's so Let me warm, take a towel. <laughs> Um, favourite holiday destination? Stroke place. I know you've travelled a lot, so favourite place. It changes all sort of constantly. I went to Sicily this year and oh, I, okay. I fell in love with it. So that's currently my number one. Yeah. But you've been to so many that maybe. I, well, it's my passion. That's what mm. I love to do the most. Travel. Yeah. yeah. Other people buy shoes, I buy. Holidays. Yeah. I don't blame <laughs> As much as I can. Yeah. Um, your favourite person? My husband. Oh, that's so nice. I love him. Oh, <laughs> my heart breaks. That's so lovely. It's true. Yeah. Oh, brilliant. Does he? Has he sort of worked with you through Rocket St George? Like, uh, was, was... no. He's a, he's a, a caterer. He used to own a restaurant. Right. Um, but now he runs a catering company. Does wedding catering. But he's and, pro- and he's part. He does pies. He's come. I'll pl- I'll pl- should plug his company. Yeah, Humble yeah. Pie. He Humble runs pie. a company called Humble Pie. Oh, he makes Humble. very good pies. And has he been all supportive of your? Oh. Very- God. Yes. Things, yeah. yeah, yeah. Brilliant. Oh, lovely. That's so nice. Um, outfit you want to be buried in? My wedding dress. Oh, gorgeous. What I, was it like? <laughs> <laughs> well, I only got married um, four years ago. Oh, wow. Okay. We've been together for years and years and years. But mm. we got, and I had a really real nightmare with my dress. Oh. The company went bust who were making it. Oh, so wow. I had a knee-jerk reaction and bought a Gucci dress oh, from wow. Fred Netta Porter, um, which is... The best thing totally ever. ridiculous thing to do. No, but cool. the dress is gorgeous. But I just want to wear it again. all the time. So I might as well be buried in uh, it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so your last supper. So I'm going to give you. You can have a starter, main, dessert, and a beverage. I know. Okay. It's so I'd have uh-huh. some kind of ceviche. I mm. love um, fish, ceviche, ceviche, t- anything, mm. raw fish. Lovely. As my starter. My main. Mm. Mm, it's tricky, I know. It's, this is a Would really... you have one of your husband's pies? No. <laughs> <laughs> I love them, but, but not freely. Uh, they're though. freely available to me all the time. Yeah, so yeah, I yeah. Need something special. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, oh, what could I eat that I've never? I've I've never eaten one, but one of those steaks, the Japanese steaks, the really. God, you have that as your last supper. Maybe I've never tried. I love that. As a I've never tried it. I'll try something that I've never tried before. Maybe. Oh, that's so cool. Most people would probably stick to what they know, but you're like, I'm going to die anyway, let's try something good. <laughs> yeah. you know, well, I, I don't eat much beef either. No, but give and, it a bath. And it, I normally have really bad, you know, it keeps me awake, mm. and because I, I don't eat much red meat, I thought, oh, well, I'm going to give it a I'm just going to eat a big steak. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> screw it, you know. Uh, dessert? Um, I'm not, I'd go cheese. Lovely, like a cheese board. Yes, cheese I'm not board. a sugar girl. And a drink to accompany this oh. dinner. Oh, a beautiful bottle of white wine, please. Mm, oh, and red wine. Well, a lot of okay, things. So Basically, yeah, I'm going to yeah, die. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll have a so margarita. Steak, <laughs> bank it up. Chasers. <laughs> yeah. Line up the booze. Bottles and bottles. <laughs> um, okay, this is going to be hard because I've just had a mini wander around your house and it's so beautiful. But your favourite thing in your house? Excluding dogs and, you know, people. people. Yeah. Oh, I'm not allowed dogs and people. I know. That's really tough. Mm, I bet. Because I'm not, I'm not that connected to product to things. I like that. I like making beautiful mm. rooms, but I. It's just stuff at the end of the day. Yeah. There's probably a drawing by one of my children that I'd oh, keep, or yeah, or something like that. I think there's a framed one in there for the center, the center or the something house. they've made. It'll yeah. be something like that. I love that about you. I love that. Not like you don't need anything materialistic. Obviously, if you need to treasure something, it's going to be something that means something. Yeah, that's awesome. Oh, the photos. I've got photos up in the loft. I photos like a back, photo back, up, back like before everything. phones. I've got the, all the photos, oh, so I keep those. I will just those. And really, really hard. Your favourite song of all time. I, this is really random. I love it. And probably um, a bit. Offensive to <laughs> Smokey Robinson, but I really like I second that emotion. But I like the Japan version. Oh, I love that from the 80s. I think it's because I was probably just an early teen, and yeah. I think it it's just conjures up a you. moment for me. Yeah, and discovering music, I was really young, so. 
but obviously the Smokey Robinson version is great too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was all randomly listening to Smokey yeah. Robinson. Yeah, the, the original obviously should be yeah. considered better, but like I like it. a bit of Japan. Yeah, gorgeous. A bit of 80s. I think it's so good when you've got a song that can, I've got songs that I don't even particularly like, but they transport me back to somewhere. Moments you know? in time, yeah, absolutely. And that's hard when I ask people about, say, their favourite holiday destination, like, you might have had an exceptional holiday in somewhere really random and not even liked the place that much. It's really hard to differentiate because it's like, did I love the place or did I just have the time I had at the place? It's like the yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, but I, my best holiday ever was I went, well, I have a few, but when I was, for my 21st birthday, I went away with my other half to Barcelona and it was literally just like the best time yeah. ever. But also, but Barcelona is always gorgeous. brilliant. It's yeah. always gorgeous. Um, that's the end of our quick fire questions. Oh, so, okay. you know, no stress, you've done that. Brilliant. Um, so, we, we got, we covered beautifully the beginnings of Rocket St. George. Like, but, but I want to know how it's like started. So I know that you, I know your, a bit of your background and stuff, but how did you and your co-founder meet and how did that? We so, met, um, we met through men. Oh yeah? <laughs> I yeah, knew men. her boyfriend at the time mm. and I think her boyfriend knew mine. Mm. And we met at a party, a fancy dress party. Oh wow, that's fun. And she was dressed in knee-high Boots. She was a fairy, I think. Uh -huh. She had a white mini dress on, and I was, I had a um, to the floor red sequin dress oh, with a sash called, saying misguided, and I was with my friend who was misleading, and I was misguided. That's but so I had good. a blonde wig on. All oh, right. And the next time I bumped into, her, I went, "Oh hi, we met the other night." Like, she went, oh, "No idea who you are." <laughs> and I was like, oh, she's so rude. You thought I had different coloured hair. So. <laughs> and then, then we met again. Mm. Um, later on but uh, it was quite a funny yeah. meeting we met a few times before we actually became okay. friends we yeah. became friends over our we both had babies yeah at the same time so you when you start how did you how did it start like you were obviously mates and then what obviously you said sort of what you were doing before but how did you go from your job you were doing before to making this like like minor side well we were work, both your... working i was working part-time as a photographer she yeah. was working part-time as a florist mm -hmm. we had Babies little, as well, ones, little yeah. ones as well. We kind of bonded over the Dairy Lee Dippers rather than the. <laughs> Love that. <laughs> we were really bad. We're not bad mothers, but we weren't quite as <laughs> disciplined. No, a, a, a disciplined as some of the others. And mm. there's quite a lot. Uh, anyone who's had a baby knows it's, there's quite a lot of pressure. Mm. And um, so, yeah, we bonded over Dairy Lee Dippers. Love and that. we just we just came up with the idea. Mm. We were, we were we just suddenly said we should do this. Yeah. You know, we we started selling a few things on eBay, but the upload process of for what we suddenly said, if I had a hundred of these, I'd only have to do this once. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. And we just started looking into it. It wasn't like we had a big business plan and no. went to the bank and asked for money. Um It just kind of evolved. We just kind of we pulled together a few thousand pounds. I think we set the whole company up for like four thousand pounds. No way, that's yeah, insane. Including the stock. That's insane. How brilliant. But the website cost us 25 quid. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you, it, you, it, it can be done. It can be done. Mm. And I took all the photographs. I yeah. read, we learned everything. I learned SEO for dummies. I learned, we read everything we could do. Yeah. I put together a press release because I knew how to do that well because yeah. of the PR. We sent it out and the first call was from Vogue. I know. Shut up. I know. <laughs> I know. It was, yeah. And it's because we had, do you remember wall stickers? Yeah, vaguely. Yeah, yeah. And they were massive when we first launched, and we mm. had lots and lots of wall stickers. And it just now, I, do you know what? My, like, I think there's room for them, but yeah. it, they became, you know, they had their time. Mm. Um, but Vogue picked that up. God, that's and we got in, in the Vogue Christmas gift guide and. Oh, and then it, because my PR experience, mm. I knew how to work with the magazines. Mm. I knew how to get their attention. And yeah. Also, you just be really efficient and get them what they want straight away. Yeah. And then, as I said, magazines. Wow. Everybody how read them, spread. so it worked. And you get a lot of your stuff from abroad, right? Or that's where you get inspiration from from traveling. No, we like that. well. Pre-COVID, we used to be in India and China and oh. Marrakesh quite regularly. Yeah. Um, but now, I haven't been since. I mean, oh, really? I'd love to get over mm. there. But um, 
which has made everything a lot harder. Mm. Um, yeah, because your just, passion is travel, and that seems to be where you get a lot of your inspiration from finding new things from abroad. Yeah. And well, like even that. just going to New York for a week, you, you know, you just... Just m removing yourself from your normal environment and mm. just going out, and it, whether it's art galleries or restaurants or... You know, I'm taking pictures of the floors, thinking, "Well, oh, that's a nice pattern. That looked good as a, yeah. you know, that looked good as a textile design." There's inspiration it's just, everywhere. But you, and yeah. you've also you've got the time to do it. Whereas when I'm here, I'm running a business, so yeah, I'm of busy working. All the time. Well, yeah, and you, when you're at home, you can't not be doing that. You know, if you're, no. you know, <laughs> if you go away, you can finally sort of like. That's the thing with the internet. <laughs> never stops. Never stops. <laughs> never stops. Um, yeah, it's brilliant. So it seems like it grew very organically, which is wonderful. Yes. And how did you start off at the beginning? Obviously, you were sort of you must have been juggling yeah, family life and building a brand. But it, as you say, it just seemed to be kind it of it just it just worked. Mm. Lucy and I are a great team. I'm saying you're they really do, good friends. Which yeah, is we are good. really good friends. Yeah. I would say never work with your friends. No, because it's a really dangerous thing to do. But mm. we are extremely lucky mm. and. We both trust each other 100% with the business. Yeah. And I really trust her decision making, as, yeah. as does she, me. And we just, it, it works. works. Yes, yeah, it well. works. I think I saw a thing that you said, we don't put anything in Rockets and George, and both of us don't approve, you know what I mean? Yeah. You've got to both love it, which I think is brilliant because if one of you was like, I love it, I love it, and then you know that it's going to appeal to a wider range of people if you both can agree. And as the founders, it's so nice that you're like, connected we are so connected and... i think and our styles are really different yeah this house that. is really maximalist mm. really out there really quirky she and it's stunning and i yeah. love being in her house but mine's much more pared back mm. much more minimalist not minim i've got no. stuff yeah you've got stuff. but i not as much as she's got mm. but i we both really like each other's style, but it's really different. But mm. if we buy, we buy, we choose the same thing. Like we could walk around a trade show, we both come that, out. That, yeah, yeah. Well, that's brilliant. I mean, what saves a lot of time. Yeah, <laughs> like imagine if you're having these decisions. Like, I really like this. No, no, like no. We just go yeah, that, 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 that. Done, done. Yeah, in and out. What has been? Have you had any massive or minor even big trials and tribulations when running Rockets and George? Did you have anything that went cat catastrophically wrong that you had to overcome? Like when doing the business. Oh, well, COVID was a COVID challenge was. and a half. Yeah. Well, that was a wonderful challenge. I mean, it was awful. Yes, of course. But for yeah. online retailers, as everybody knows, mm. it, 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 especially homeware, we had, you know, but growing a business from your sitting room, mm. um, trying to find new warehousing, employ new stuff, it was really quite a challenge. Yeah. Mm. Um, but that was really exciting. But I think now, now's the biggest challenge. It's tough. It is really hard out there, isn't it? It is it's really, really, hard really out tough. There. And you know, you guys have got such a brilliant business going and such a niche and things. But as we said earlier, there's a lot of like oversaturation and you know, cost of living crisis and things. The cost of living crisis. People can't. You know. No. It's a, I mean, I don't want to go down the road of talking about politics, mm. but it is tough. It is like really that. tough. Yeah, I feel you, and I think I think all businesses are going to have a tough couple of years. Yeah, yeah, and I think it is difficult in our industries in the fact that obviously when people can barely, you know, again I don't want to go too political, but when people can't are struggling to pay for their bills, they're not going to pay for hey an interior designer or be a new lovely lamp, are they? You know, it's, and you understand it, but it's yeah difficult for businesses at this point. Um, what would you advise someone trying to grow a creative business like yours? I mean, you yeah you sort of said at the beginning just ask people and get loads of advice that seems to be the best get loads of tactic, advice you know? get loads of advice start collecting data mm. sounds very boring no 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 it's good though because that's <laughs> but, business that's but like you have to start up. getting your customer base and yeah. marketing to the people who want you find your people and you give them what they want yeah and you have to you know you don't spend your time trying to convert people to your product if they're not going to be into it find your people and then give them they want to hear from you yeah they want to buy your products then you're not trying to push anything on anyone you just yes you need to manage your data and learn from it and then find your customer base yes. and and then and talk to them yeah talk to your customers yeah. listen to them yeah and find out what they want from you because i think i think it's the when you're running a marketing department You've got so many marketing companies telling you you should be doing this, you should be doing mm. that, you should be doing the other. 
They don't know your customer. No. Talk to your customer. Find out what they want you to do. That's so true. Why would you go through someone else? You can, and now that is one brilliant thing with the growth of Instagram and things and the fact that you can, and social media and the internet in general, and the fact that you can go directly to source. Sure. You don't necessarily have to sort of go through someone else. You can else. do you can little, little questions on or, Instagram and yeah. people are really reactive to those. Yeah. But you can also send out a survey. You'd be surprised how mm. much people enjoy I love a survey. Love a good <laughs> survey. Honestly, I'll fill out any survey anytime about anything. But even if you've got a small group of people who mm. are really into what you do... That's enough. That's enough. Get the information from them mm. and then now you know who you're talking to. I think it's super nice as well because, again, like doing a podcast like this or as you say, being active on Instagram, it gives people... I think it's so important to have that connection to the actual people who run the brand now. Like, I don't think it's good enough to be like, I'm a brand and I sell this. I think, you know, they... face this brand. Absolutely. Yeah. They've got a face behind the brand. They have people who, you know, I follow you on Instagram, people who follow Rockets and they know you, they know your face, they know your, but like, they know a lot of your story. And I think that's so good because then you invest in the human beings as opposed to just like a big corporate, you know, homogenized corporation where it's like, here's some stuff, you know? I that's do agree, good. but it is, that's quite hard for people because yeah. not everybody wants to do this. No, it's and daunting for it sure. It is daunting. And I think you have to be brave and put yourself out there. You have to now. I do think that's the best advice ever because, again, I, this joking part, even doing like a podcast and things, doesn't necessarily come that naturally to me. Like, any time I do one, I obviously, you always feel... You're brilliant at it. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> that's so kind. But you always feel, you know, nervous, but I love talking to people. So as soon as you, you know, if you're going somewhere and you think, I'm doing an interview today or whatever, it could sound quite daunting almost. But as soon as you sit down and you actually realise that you're just talking to another human being, then there's nothing to be scared about. And even when, you know, I've got a lot of, you know, I follow a lot of people on social media who sort of, like, marketers who try and advise you what to do. And obviously it's scary, Ab. The first time you just talk in front of a camera or go, hi, I'm Molly, or hi, I'm Jane. And, you know, you know that there's people watching and you're going to put your face out there. It is terrifying. Oh, it's horrible. It's horrible. But once you've done it a couple of times, you think, you know, what am I scared of? But how many times do you see people doing it mm. and you... I don't even think twice about it. <gasps> exactly. I exactly. Th I don't think... I mean, there is a lot of judging in the world. Yes. But I don't think... I think we're used to seeing people, people. talk to camera now. Yeah, I do. And I think it's not a big deal and it isn't as Daunting. terrifying as, no. as I think it once was. And I think it's brilliant. And no one cares. No one cares. <laughs> you know, no one cares. <laughs> you realise no one cares. You That's think, true. Oh, yeah. yeah, I'm obsessing so much about the tiny little lipstick on my teeth so no one else has even noticed it. Like, yeah. Or if you have got lipstick on your teeth, then no one cares. feeling better because that, that means that, you know, you're human, you're human. and ever, that happens. And again, I think even when social media and stuff was launched, there was, and even there's still quite a high level of it. In my little community, there's not so much, but there's still quite a high level of like, everything's got to look glossy and pristine and perfect all the time. But what I'm loving is getting more stuff like this where you actually see the proper human beings behind it. I just think that's so brilliant. I mean, I did another... But then if you're too glossy and perfect, you become the corporate brand again. Yeah, you don't want that. You, the, the reality is important. It is. Yeah. Get to know the true people. Um, what does a day look like for you? I'm sure that... <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. They're, they're never the same. No. Ever. No. So, I don't know. What did I talk you through last week? Yeah. Um, Monday I was in the office. So I was just catching up, emails, administration. Mm -hmm. I, this could get... Yeah. We're installing a new server. Very exciting. No, that is. That is. It's all the, that's all the business so, stuff that is important. Yeah. You know? um, we launched a new store. So I went up on Tuesday to help with that. And Where do you launch a new store? Sorry. Neil Street. Oh, wow. Amazing. In Covent Garden. We've, oh, wow. we've actually got two. We've got one up in... Up north in Dewsbury, it's a place called Red Brick Mill. Gorgeous. Which is a, it's, it's mm. stunning. Have yeah. you been there? No, I've heard of it though. I've it's heard a, really good things. It's I've a heard it's pretty. huge old mill. Yeah. And it's got loads of interior brands in there. Wow. So heels are in there, wow. made are in there. Um, and we've just gone in mm. and it's got lovely, apparently, lovely restaurants. Wow. And it's Sounds like a day out. It's like destinational homeware Gosh. shopping. So you can go have a mooch around. If you needed a sofa, there's loads of different brands selling different sofas. Oh. Um, we're selling loads of all, all our range, really. Wow. Is it a big um, store you've got there or big-ish? It's big-ish. Mm. It's not huge. We're, mm. we're dipping our toe in the market. Yeah. We're desperate to meet our northern customers because yeah. we, are, you know, we are based down here. Mm. And... We, when we wrote our second book, we went up and did a, um, a bit of a book tour. We went to Edinburgh, we went up north oh, and did some talks. 
And it was so brilliant to meet all those people. Yeah. And so we we wanted a base up there, which and we're going to do some events up there and, oh, and do customer events. And God, that'd be lovely. Yeah, it'll be yeah. really good. Yeah. Brilliant. Exciting. So yeah, your day in the life of you is just so varied then. Really. Yes. You could, <laughs> anything. You could, you could be, be anything. could be anything. Like yesterday I had product development meetings all day. Mm. So working on our spring, summer and, our, um, and yeah. just putting down the range plan for autumn, winter next year. So mm. it's, it varies, it varies daily. Well, that's it running a business, isn't it? That it's never going to be as simple as like, I want to come in and I do this and I tick my boxes and I leave again. It's no. always I'm, I'm lovely. lovely. I'm, be- I'm very grateful. Do you love for it? Do you love the job yes, you do? Yes, I love my job. Yeah, that's so lucky. There's so few people in the world who have that, I think. They are boring. You know, I do some boring, boring stuff. I'm sure. Yeah, it's not all glamorous. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah. I, was, I was telling my daughter there, I said, there are parts of every job that's really boring. Yeah, <laughs> oh, of course. Um, yeah. But the majority of it is, and it's a roller coaster ride. We don't, we're, we don't stop. We, we always do we're always doing something like we're opening two stores in the beginning of a recession but we just like yes let's do it just we in. can't stop you've just got to keep putting your energy keep in there in. Yeah. and I have yeah a lot of I have had a lot of conversations about growing your own business and I do think the fact if you're passionate and you're driven that's the only thing that's going to get yeah. you anywhere you because if you're not completely 100% relentlessly invested in it and the fact that you're thinking about it 24-7 it's, as you say it's hard out there and it's you've got to have all that otherwise it's not going to go very well yeah and yeah. a great team yeah that would be my team. top advice get the right people in your team yeah because you spend a lot of time with them so you've got to like them as you know as you get and you've got to trust level. them with your brand yeah and they're going to make the right decisions and it's like handing over a baby you know it's like, <laughs> it's like this is my company look after it for yes. me please you know you care about it a lot um, and I also wanted to cover, I know I had a little flick through your website and stuff, obviously, and you do a lot of stuff for charities, you're sustainable, um, you did say like divine, d- design with diversity, tell me a bit about all that. Well, we, I'm really, really keen on the sustainable furniture. Great. It, it's being in a, home, a homeware brand, it is extremely difficult mm-hmm, mm-hmm. to tick those boxes. I bet. And be the right, uh, hit the right price points. Mm. I'm still trying, and it's yeah. something that's a, 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 a mountain that we're climbing. But mm. I'm determined to make it happen. Yeah. We did an amazing range with a UK supplier mm-hmm. who made us sustainable furniture oh, using wow. wood that was reclaimed from somewhere else. It put used reused coffee grindings in the and to, oh. it was it was really clever, clever, clever stuff. Yeah. But not everyone can. It, the price points are so difficult to I achieve, you. and you know we all I'm, we all need to be able to afford stuff. these stuff oh, yeah. um, to make our homes look beautiful. So mm. it's a continuous Battle. process. Yeah. There's lots of new materials that are coming out. Mm. Um, recycled plastics. There's some beautiful, beautiful. Um, I don't know if you know a company like Smile Plastics. They make oh, amazing yes. yeah, yeah. Um, surfaces that I'm trying to think. How can I make how that into in? furniture? That's really good. And, thing. Uh, but we're always, always trying to develop. Yeah, ideas that reach that. I have to say, India are really, really good at this. Yeah, yeah. Um, they have very strict rules on their use of wood, and and mm. the sustainability of the wood they used in the furniture. Yeah. So yeah. there are changes being made. Yeah. And we are very mindful of that, but it's it's a it's struggle. I'm also yeah, and we also recycle everything in yeah. our warehouse. That's easier. Like our car, all our packaging is recyclable. Mm. Um, we've even got something now that condenses all the polystyrene because I can't bear polystyrene, oh. but it's, it stops things breaking. Yeah, I, this is the thing. I've, I've got so many companies I know now that send everything with pet, like wrapped in paper, which I think is brilliant for the yeah. planet, but it so regularly comes smash and I'm like, if this was in bubble wrap, it wouldn't break. But then bubble wrap's really bad for the environment. So yeah, it's like awful. Really but, but there is, um, we, can, we can recycle polystyrene now yeah, so that's, that's um really good and we mm. every all our waste where possible we recycle yeah and or we have somebody we have a man who comes the steel man we call him in a van <laughs> and takes any any of the metal that we we've got from broken products or whatever so we do try very mm. very hard to do all i that. think it's just brilliant that you're even consciously thinking about it all the time you know clearly you know I'm, yeah well it's important everybody should be yeah no you're right i mean i 
well, I brought out a very small product range and I really was hot and I wanted it all to be basically produced in the UK and sustainable and the, the, my, my figures and margins don't work. Like, no, the amount it costs really to make it and then the, no one would want to pay, you know, £500 for a cushion after I'm taking all the costs of da, 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 da. So it's really, really hard. But as long as you're, you know, doing everything you can, which as you say everyone should be, then that's all you can do. We, we are. Yeah. And it's but, you know, happens. there are still products that we buy from, because we, we, work with factories and we work with wholesalers and they go well, all arrive in plastic and I'm yeah. like, oh, stop it, stop it. <laughs> um, and it, it's, you know, we, I think it, it's, it, it's a collective effort. We yeah. should all be trying all to do time. better. Have you got any fun collaborations or collections or stuff coming out that you can tell us we about? We have, well, we've got a 15 year, old, 15 year collection, oh, wow. which we've really gone back to our Rocket St George roots and with all the iconic things that were ours, like disco balls and stars and oh, black and gold. And, and uh, we've got these amazing eider downs and these really cool cushions oh, and God. lots of things coming very, very soon. <laughs> I can't wait. I'm so excited. And some really, oh, yes, there's so much coming, actually. We've got mm. some really exciting bar stores coming, which are really funny. I'm not going to... Oh, They're okay. really, really funny. <laughs> I can't wait. I'm so excited. Just some really cost-effective, quite simple, but they're going to make really people funny. smile. Oh, I can't wait. I can't wait. <laughs> Um, and I want to talk a little bit because you know Christmas is coming. I want to talk a little bit about Christmas. And we love you, Christmas. We love Christmas. Have you got? I saw on your website you've got some Christmassy stuff. Have you got a Christmassy collection, and I want to know also what Christmas looks like in your house. What do you do? What happens? That was so many questions. But well, this <laughs> okay. Wait, I'll start with the, what, what we've got coming. We yeah. we always do our icons, the glass icons, love which them. we. Um, so far, the Queen, obviously. Oh, yeah. We had bought those, but we didn't know. No, <laughs> we bought them. It was still a little better, you know. <laughs> but um, she's, it's, she's doing extremely well. Yeah. But we've got David Bow, we've got um, Elton John, love we've it. got um, Freddie Mercury, all those. They always, I love them, they just make me laugh. They're so fun, yeah. We've got some really cool black and white decoration. We've got hundreds of decorations, mm. actually. We've mm. really gone to town this mm. year. Some amazing trees in in um, pastel colours, oh, in glass, wow. Oh, wow. with little bubbles on the top, black and white check decorations. Wow. We've got a pampas grass Christmas tree. Oh, I love the sound of that. That will go That's going to be mental. Good. We've I got recycled that. plastic tinsel. Oh, perfect. Yes, and it's not the kind of Tacky, weak. Yeah, yeah, it's like thick, thick shiny. I mean, for, for our image, we used it, we pinned it, we've got gold and black, and we made a striped Christmas tree oh. pinned against the wall. And it's like chucks and babies. Oh, gorgeous. It's like a, the fairy wall. Oh my god, that's so brilliant. Yeah, and, really and what cool. do you guys do at Christmas? What's the Christmas going to look like in January? We Christmas? always host. Yeah. It's got yes. the house for it. We always cool. host. I, well, I've got the caterer. Oh, wow, perfect, there you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so course. we always have loads and loads of people. I've got mm. three kids, they've all got partners, mm. um, and our extended family, my brother comes, Toby's sister, mm. we just anyone who's... Anyone who wants anyone to come. Anyone who wants to come, come, comes. So we have a big, big meal here. Oh, that's so exciting. And, yeah, so it's always, and we play a lot of games. Oh, fun. What's your favourite Christmas game? <gasps> Oh, tricky stations. Now, this is a game that no one will know. Okay, tell me about it. Someone tell me next. Go on. <laughs> it's called Stations, and my, I, I don't know who invented it. Mm. We always played it when I was a child. It's it's a silly game. It's good with kids, yeah. basically. Everyone's got the name of a station. Uh -huh. There's a certain amount of chairs. Someone stands up in the middle and says Victoria and <laughs> Kings Cross change, and they have to change seats, oh, and you have to try and get into their seat. So you're the one left in the middle. So that it's just basically so ends up in a bit of a scrap. That's but, it. And, that's then, what you and want. then you can say all change, where everyone has to change. That sounds so good. Yeah. It's like musical chairs, but for stations, that's so it's fun. just a bit. Yeah, it's fun, especially if there are children. Little kids love they it. They will get like so oh, yeah, excited. Yeah, yeah. Now I think this is a game that everyone knows, but then I often think these things, and then people go, "No, Molly, what are you talking about? Have you ever heard of the chocolate game? Yes, with the scarves yes. and the dice. Oh my that god, that's gonna be my second choice. No way. So if for anyone who doesn't know what the chocolate game is, which I don't understand. Stand if you don't, it's where you yeah you roll a six and you sit in a circle and then if you get a six you have to put a hat, gloves and the scarf on and then chop chop up yeah. cup, chocolate with a knife and fork and eat it quickly before the next person gets a six. Sounds like chaos. I'm so glad you played that. It's the best <laughs> we game. Play it every year. That's so good. Obviously, I've said it's getting the wrapper like, off. It's the most yeah, like, frustrating. <laughs> <laughs> Once you've got like a scarf, yeah. like, chaos. 
that concludes my Unpleasant People podcast, Jane, honestly. And it's been a pleasure. You are lovely. Your home is oh, beautiful. You're very lovely too. Thank, thank you. you for coming. Thank you for having me. I feel so lucky to be here. So thank you. And um, yeah, that concludes our podcast. Thank you, everyone. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> <I'm good>. Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs>